Hello guys, today we are going to learn how we can create a sunburst effect for backgrounds using Corel Draw. A sunburst effect is something similar to this. Let's see this picture, something like this or something similar to this. This is also a sunburst effect, right? So you, all you see is you see like rays, right, scattered from the center, spreading across the whole background of the design. And it's really, really interesting. It's something that is nice for creating things like um, ice cream, uh, you know ice cream packages or food packages you know stuff stuff like that right that looks really really nice so we're going to be creating something like this with coral draw so the first step to doing that is creating your document which i've already done the next thing is i use a 6.5 by 4.0 size for the stuff you can use anything so the next thing is to double click on a rectangle tool so you create a box that will be that will serve as your container to hold your design and after creating the box, we are going to introduce the color. I have taken um, the paints to sample the colors out that I'm going to be using. So the colors are actually on my document palette right now. So I'm going to introduce the first color. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a gradient. But before we do that, we just, I'm just going to have to punch in. I'm going to, going to have to click this color to add it there. So once we add the color, I will remove the outline from the properties bar because I don't want an outline. And so I am not going to use a solid feel like this. I want to use a gradient. I want the middle to have like a splashy color. So for that to happen, I'll press G and then I'll go to my properties bar. And I'll click fountain fill. And from there, I'm going to click on the white part of it. And I'll switch the color with my eyedropper to a default yellow that I have. And I have after switching the color to this yellow, I am going to switch from the same properties, but I'm going to switch it from linear fountain field to elliptical fountain field, so it feels like a circle. And I'm going to just squeeze it in a bit. It's not so necessary to squeeze it in, but you could do that. And if you want it to look very, very perfect, you could as well draw this whole thing to make it look rounder. So there, we have our, um, we have our background created. Now the next thing to do, which is the important thing, is to add our sunburst effect. To do this, we need to introduce a shape. So first of all, I'm going to bring in a box. You could bring a box in, you could bring a line in. Uh, let's introduce a box. So we just draw a straight box like so, as long like this. And uh, let's just give it a feel. Let's just give it black so we can see. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to destroy this shape. So once we have this area here to be narrow a bit, we'll have this area narrow and this area will remain the way it is. So to do that, we have to destroy this shape. So we'll do Ctrl Q to destroy this shape. Or you could go to Object and go to Convert to Curves. You can see it's already grayed out because we've applied it already. You can also find it in the Properties bar when it's not converted yet. You can always find it there. At the end of the property bar when the object is selected you can see convert to curves right and what this does for you is it enables this shape to be modified using the shape tool so the next thing we do is to grab our shape tool and then come here and, and reduce this in just count the number of steps i did three there yeah, so i'm doing three here all right and maybe just do four and four here right so it looks it feels a bit yeah you can see the difference you can see this place is narrower and this place is wider so with this done we need to make a duplicate of this shape so do your control or rather just do control c and v and then hold control again grab the handle at this base at this um left edge uh, middle left rather and then hold control and just flip it to the other side and move it a bit to give it a little bit of space right so i think this space is is cool enough you select both of them and click ctrl g to group them um next thing you want to do is create uh more of these shapes so to do that all we need to do is go to our windows under the under the menu options you go to windows and under windows you go to dockers and under dockers you look for transform mine is already checked so i can find it at the right hand side close to my color palette so you can see the transform controls there so once you click, yours should be open by default, but even if it's not, if you click on it, it's going to open up. We want to make duplicates of this shape we've created. But before we do that, let's just do a little bit of calculation. Now, we have created one shape, we made a duplicate, and put it on the other side, and then group them together. Now, normally, if you want a shape to run round and, like, form a circle, if you want a shape to run around and form a circle, you need to fit the shape into a... Uh, 
a 360 degree value right you need to fix a 360 degree value to to the shape in this case we've made one shape and we want them to go round but we made a, another shape so we kind of like have two shapes that are grouped together so we don't really need or we don't necessarily need everything to go around anymore because we've had we now have two shapes on opposite sides so we kind of like need half kind of like need half of the shapes to go around so what we are looking for is something like in the region of half of 360 degrees so we're looking at 180 degrees so we want to make a couple of um, shapes and then rotate them in a 180 degree sequence right so how do we now achieve this so after creating these two we come to our um, transform controls another transform we go to rotate and here we are going to specify the rotation of the object now uh, we are going to leave the, the anchor point at the center the origin point at the center so everything rotates around this center here which is actually what we want and uh, we are not going to touch this but we are going to work on the angles and we are also going to work on the copies the number of um, uh, objects that we are making duplicate of so now let us do a little bit of mathematics if we want a 180 let's say we want 20 shapes to go in 180 degrees it means we have to divide 180 by 20 and that should be giving us um, something in the region of 9 degrees right so since we are looking at generating um, 100 and, um, 180 degrees using 20 shapes we are going to fix them at angles of 9 degrees to each other and it's going to give us something perfect like a circle so let's do that so let's switch the angle here to 9 degrees let us switch uh, the copies to okay we are going to need 20 copies we already have one right one group already so we need 19 more so we're going to fix 19 here which is okay so once we apply this it's going to generate a shape that goes around the whole shape so you can see exactly what we are trying to do here so it goes around and it generates all the shapes that we're talking about it's pretty cool right and if you feel that the spaces are too wide apart you might want to adjust your original shape or you might want to adjust the number of um, shapes you're working with so in this case i think we're going to settle with um, these 20 shapes right so we select them all um, without the background you could do this outside your background so you don't have to go through the stress of selecting if you want to deselect your background you have to just hold shift and look for it select click on it so it to deselect so once you select everything we are going to weld them all together so we could as well ungroup them and weld them and now everything sticks together as one object so with this done you just want to position it in the middle of the same um, shape and power clip it inside now for that to happen i need to change the color to something in the mid range like this and remove the outline and then i'll right click and see and power clip it inside of this shape it's not centered so come to fit content here you could do that from here you could just go to fit content and say center and then it centers on the shape so you could actually see that the sunburst effect is almost here so we'll go right inside the shape and in the middle here we we'll double click and i want to remove this hole here I'll highlight all the nodes surrounding it and delete and then we have a closed out space there so you can see that uh, we have generated our sunburst effect right so we have generated the sunburst effect but one good thing you could do is you could give it a this bright yellow like this and maybe just use uh transparency a bit so that it blends in with the original shape that way it looks better right so you can do this and you can see how the sunburst effect is looking really nice uh it's letting the lights from the middle shine through and everything is now blending and it make it makes it more perfect so this is how you create a sunburst effect on coral draw if you want to do some interesting some other interesting stuff you could add a couple of text and other things to it you could achieve things like this the supreme you know you could have text and you could have shapes you bring all these things in and then you can have something really really interesting um to work with right so it, it is a very very cool very very effective very very um simple background um you could create using you could generate using coral draw so i do hope that you've um learned one or two things from this tutorial and if you've done that i would like you to leave a thumbs up and you could also drop a comment and please don't forget to subscribe and also share this video with your friends so that more people can actually watch and learn anything too see you next time